They say women age like a fine wine. And while that may be true, technology tends to age like milk left out in the sun in the middle of summer. So if you're looking to build or upgrade your gaming PC here in the later parts of 2023, there's some updated advice that you need to take forth because the advice of gaming PCs yesteryear certainly is not translating to the market today. So I've got a couple of items that you need to just steer clear away from at this point. And then I've got some recommendations for budget builds all the way up to the ridiculous builds if there is such a thing as recommending ridiculous builds. All right, now before we get started, there's a certain group of you guys that are already at your keyboards, clack, clack, clacking, about to let me have it. And we'll do that because it helps out engagement. But I'm gonna tell you right now, this video is not for the super budget PC builders. And for super budget, I'm talking probably $300 or less. Uh, for $300, basically you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. But for everybody else, let's take a look at some things that you should not be using anymore. First on the list, spinning mechanical drives. Now, it used to be conventional wisdom was get yourself a 128 gig SSD and then a terabyte spinning drive because you save so much money. And while that's just not the case anymore, a spinning drive usually costs 30 to 50 bucks over on Amazon. And quite frankly, that's for a terabyte. You could get a terabyte NVMe drive for about the same price. So it really doesn't make sense to get a secondary uh, spinning drive. Now, the second group I want to talk to are you two and a half inch SSD guys. There's no need for them anymore. Pretty much any modern board is going to come with an NVMe drive, and you should actually take advantage of that and use an NVMe drive. The cost difference between them is just not that large. For instance, there is this 2.5 inch SSD for Team Group, which is about $22 for a 512 gig drive. Well, the same NVMe drive is going to cost you about the same price or maybe a little bit cheaper if you go with one of the super budget drives. Uh, so it doesn't really make sense to use the two and a half inch drives, which once again, you need to now have SATA power and SATA data, data which again, you now need to have SATA power and SATA data, more cables going in to clutter up how your build looks. Just not a need to really have two and a half inch drives anymore. Now, as far as gaming PC specs, I just wanted to update where I think you should be for each of the different budget sections um, that I have listed here. So starting off first, if you've got a five to $600 budget for a gaming PC, you should really be looking for either a four or six core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte NVMe drive. That's gonna leave you enough room for probably just using the stock cooler, a decent micro ATX case, and something like maybe a 6600 XT. So I put together a PC part picker list here and you can see it has the i3-12100, uh, which is four core, eight thread, but the 12th gen and 13th gen uh, i3s are much faster than typical. Um, it also has a B660 motherboard, so not having to go down to an H610, and then a decent power supply and an RX 6600. Now this is still gonna give you really good 1080p gaming performance, and at this budget range, 1080p is really what you should be targeting with high refresh rates. And the other sacrifice that you're going to have to make in this budget range is you're going to have to be a previous gen, maybe two back, uh, to really hit those. And with this PC part picker list, you could actually go and just swap out, maybe do a 10th gen 10105 or something like that on a B460 or B560 motherboard and bring it down closer to that 500. But I think 500 to $600 is a good range for a 12100 system with the 6600. Once again, 1080p gaming, high refresh rates, shouldn't have any issues at all. Now, if we're gonna move up in the budget range here, something around 1,000 to 1,500, I think at this point you should have some of the niceties and you should be on basically a system that will run 1440p games at high refresh rates. So taking a look at the PC part picker list for $1,000 to $1,500, we have the 7700X, which is an eight core 16 thread CPU. Uh, we also have two terabytes of NVMe storage because I think that would be important. Uh, we have a B650 motherboard and we have a uh, 6700 XT for the graphics card. So all in all, you're gonna get some niceties. The other thing I think you should have at this price point is 32 gigs of RAM. And realistically speaking, if you're on a DDR5 platform, Go with the 32 gigs of RAM. Even if you decide to go with a DDR4 platform and maybe use the 5800X3D, still go with that 32 gigs of RAM because the price between 16 and 32 gigs of RAM right now really is not that different. And so I'm right now recommending 32 gigs just because of the pricing. You can get by with 16 gigs of RAM, but if it's only gonna cost you $20 difference, why bother? Now, of course, we put an AIO on here and a pretty decent case. 
Once again, you can substitute those things out to move closer to the 1000 than the 1500. And once again, uh, 5800X3D is a perfectly viable option. Um, but I wanted to highlight kind of the platform of being on current generation here. But certainly no one's going to get upset with a 5800X3D as their gaming platform. But just keep in mind that the AM4 platform is dead. Everything's going to AM5. So maybe look at the 7800X3D, but that's probably going to cost you a little bit more than the $1,500 budget. All right, and now here's the fun part where we get to throw money to the wind and, and set it on fire or whatever your metaphor is. So for you guys out there that are just going to go all out, you want the best of the best, and money is no object, are you taking applications for sugar babies? Because, um, like, you know, I, I, I have a wife and I'm straight, but I do some shady stuff in, in, a, in an alley for what I'm about to show you. Starting off with the PC part picker list, we have none other than the 7950X3D uh, or 7850, hold on, what was that? As I was saying, the 7950X3D because when money is no object, why not get the fastest gaming processor there is to date? Uh, because we'll just throw caution to the wind. And of course, if you're going to get the fastest gaming G uh, CPU, you need the fastest gaming GPU as well. So that's going to be the 4090, obviously, because... Why wouldn't you just game on a 4090 so you can push 4K at you know high refresh rates unless you're playing Starfield, in which case you can't play anything at high refresh rates because, because game optimization is dead and, and we just push out the things that get us the most money the fastest, not actually put time into doing anything that would actually bring value and joy into people's lives because corporate profits and stuff. Now, of course, you're going to need a lot of RAM, so why not put in 64 gigs of RAM? Uh, if you, you know, money is no object, put in 256 gig. I think that's the cap for Windows 10 or Windows 11. Is it 256 gig? Anyway, put in as much RAM as you want to, but I put 64, I think, in this one. Then, of course, you know, just need a bunch of uni fans and a ridiculous case to round it out and an AIO to keep it all cool. And, and you got yourself a, a nice PC that's going to cost you you know, a, a, a lot of money. I, I blacked out, so I don't remember the price. Hold on, let me go get that. Oh yeah, all that could be yours for a mere $5,555.13. But, uh, you know, if you front me the $55.55, I'll put in the 13 cents of my own money to, to build that. So just let me know if you want that deal or just leave a comment down below or, or join the Pinky Tech Discord server and you can just ping me over there and let me know. Um, yeah, that, that's a lot of money to, to play video games. Uh, that should really be like a content creation type PC, but I'm not judging anybody. If you got the money, go on ahead and do it. I don't know why this arm is like this. So in conclusion, what is this, a high school essay? Stop it. So uh, yeah, to wrap this all up, those are my recommendations for gaming PCs right now. If you do something different, leave a comment down below. Let me know what that looks like. Um, otherwise, uh, subscribe, like, do all the good YouTube things to help me out. And as always, guys, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully. Why are you still here? The video is literally over. I, I have no idea what you're doing at this point.